Welcome everybody to our Facebook service. We're glad that you could join us for another Sunday. We pray that your hearts will be warmed and that you will be welcomed, that you will enjoy the worship and the word. May God be with you and bless you all today. trust you Jesus in all things come on somebody isn't it about time that you leave it at the hands of Jesus you speak in the night say trust me you're not meant to carry it alone oh just trust in me I'm your healer I'm your healer I'm your healer he says trust me for your
working all things out for your good. Oh, it doesn't matter what the doctor's report says. It doesn't matter what your bank account says. Oh, he's in charge, he's in charge, he's in charge. Oh, he's speaking peace. He's speaking peace over me tonight. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. I thank God for his goodness, sufficient grace, new mercies each day, and his undying love for keeping me and my loved ones safe, especially during this time of uncertainty. My name is Sister Sharon James from High Come Wesleyan Holiness Church, and I work in a residential home for the elderly, housing 41 residents. Work was really hectic, especially on my allocated wing. We had several residents who were already at the end of their lives. It was a battle for many, but I saw it as an opportunity and a privilege to support and guide them through those challenging days by reminding them of the love of God and what Jesus did for us. Given consent from them, I read the Bible and prayed for them. I believe that they had a good death as they just slipped away peacefully. COVID-19 residents were released from hospitals to our care home. We have cared for them with lots of TLC. Two were from another home and one was having community care. They were nursed back to health and decided to stay with us. Management had spent thousands of pounds for maintaining PPE, but I believe that no amount of personal protective equipment could have protected me from COVID-19, but God. My journey throughout the lockdown was an experience that really amazed me of God's greatness. Just before the lockdown, I felt as if I was moving with a force, as if someone was pushing me along and didn't have time to stick around. That feeling remained with me for several weeks until suddenly it just left before the government started to ease the lockdown. I share this with some of my colleagues who thought they were having similar experience, experiences. Family members from the Caribbean was phoning and texting several times a day. Watching the BBC New World News was not helping them as seeing the daily death rate for the UK, they became very worried. I would reassure them and made them know by it, saying that we have to believe God's words and leave everything in his hands. I saturated myself by grabbed hold of Matthew 21, 22, Proverbs 3, 5, and Proverbs 16, 3, John 14, 1, and 27, Isaiah 26, 3 and 12, Isaiah 41, 10, Romans 5, 1, Romans 16, 20, Philippians 4, 6 and 7, Colossians 3, 15, Psalms 4, 8, Psalms 29, 11. I cheated them as medicine and daily meals. I never despair but applied God's words into my life at every opportunity because he determines the number of days of my days but I determine how they are spent by allowing his peace to reign in my heart. I've now taken four COVID-19 tests to which all came back negative. I give God the glory, the praise and the honor not because of what he has done but because of who he is. He truly deserves to be glorified. I thank him every moment of my life. God bless. Hi, I'm Amy Richardson and I'm going to be talking about how the cancellation of exams has affected me and may have affected others as well. So, as most of you should know or may know, that um, GCSEs and A-level exams have been cancelled 
this could leave people feeling stressed, anxious, all sorts of things. Um, personally for me, at the beginning, I felt quite annoyed because of how much revision I put into my exams. But then later on, as like quarantine developed and lockdown further developed, I realised that it's all in God's hands. And I'd like to share a scripture with you, which is taken from Proverbs 3, and it's, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on to thy own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Okay, thanks. Come Holy Spirit.
Oh, you can never say too much to him. Come on, bless him. Bless him. Good morning, Church. My poem this morning is entitled, A Christian Journey. When I became a Christian, I thought that God would have my back, no matter what I did. I tried so hard, but nothing seemed to work. It's like I have no will. I don't know what I did or how I got it wrong. It's, my, it's like my life was ending, and I didn't know what to do, so I prayed to God to help me and he came shining through. You know, life as a Christian is never easy. You have that battle in doing what's good. Sometimes you will fail as the devil rides your back, but God will give you a shield to wear and help you to resist attack. There's one thing I have learnt, and it's that faith plays a part. Without it you are lost, riding the waves just on a raft. But when you put your trust in God, he will step onto that raft with you, giving you strength to overcome whatever you're going through. Have trust in God, for things do get better, slowly as your faith grows stronger. You are never alone, no matter what you're going through. Remember, God is just a prayer away, and he truly loves you. We are living in uncertain times, the like we have never seen. Each day it's changing, new things are put in place. Sometimes we don't know which is up, but I know a man that's full of grace. So when you're feeling down, when you are lost, your job and your money has all gone, do not get depressed, try not to worry, for you know God will provide. So put your trust and faith in him and he will do the rest. Thank you. Genesis 22, verses 1 to 14. Later God tested Abraham and called to him, Abraham. Yes, here I am, he answered. God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I show, will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut the wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place that God told him about. Two days later, Abraham saw the place in the distance. Then Abraham said to his servants, You stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go over there. We'll worship, after that we'll come back to you. Then Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and gave it to his son Isaac. Abraham carried the burning coals and the knife. The two of them went on together. Isaac spoke up and said, Father, yes son, Abraham answered. Isaac asked, we have the burning coals and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God will provide a lamb for the burnt offering son. The two of them went on together. When they came to the place that God had told him about, Abraham built the altar and arranged the wood on it. 
Then he tied up his son, Isaac, and laid him on the top of the wood on the altar. Next, Abraham picked up the knife and took it in his hand to sacrifice his son. But the messenger of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, he answered. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you did not refuse to give me your son, your only son. When Abraham looked around, he saw a ram behind him, caught by its horns in a bush. So Abraham took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son.
Wow, thank you, Jadine, for sharing that wonderful song. It's one of my favourite songs, actually, and you sung it beautifully. So may God bless you. Good morning, everybody. I hope that you all are well. Um, for those of you that don't know me, um, my name is Paul, and I serve and pastor in Harrogate with my wife, Angeline. And um, I'm privileged to be able to share um, a short word with you today, which I hope will encourage you. So let's just open up in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can hear your word at this time. Bless it, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would move by your spirit. For all those that are listening today, we pray that you would meet them at the point of their needs. Let it come forth with power and authority. Let you be seen, Lord, and let your blessings flow today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, um, I've got a topic for you today which is called Keeping Focused No Matter What. Keeping Focused No Matter What. And before I start, I just want to say thank you for Reverend Ruth um, for having the vision to use this platform to encourage the church across the district uh, and also for Pastor David who is working very hard in coordinating all these Sunday services so may God bless you both. Times are changing and we are having to move with the times whether we like it or not. We all have to adapt in some way but through it all God has been truly good. I, I, I'm sure you could say that with me. God has been truly good. And sometimes I just sit back and uh, I, 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 I think how good God has been to me and all I want to do is just give him praise. Despite what's happening out there, my focus is to serve him and to give him the praise because he's done so much for me and I'm sure he's done so much for you. So whatever we, you may be facing today, whatever I may be facing today, God is with us and God is in control. And I think we really need to take stock of that today because there are a lot of distractions out there, a lot of distractions out there to discourage us, to, to, to get us focusing on the wrong directions and the wrong things. But we need to focus on God and we need to do what he says. In my younger days, and I'm still young, I used to love competing in um, school sports day um, and even the church sports day as well. Um, but there was a race called the obstacle race. I'm sure some of you may have competed in that. Um, and one thing I liked about the obstacle race is it, 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 it was fun. Um, you saw the finish line, but before you got to the finish line, there were obstacles in your way. They could be objects, they could be um, different bits and pieces where you had to overcome to get to the finish line. I want to say today that we are in a massive spiritual ob obstacle race. And the thing about this race is, it doesn't seem like it's ending anytime soon. Um, and as we journey in this race, we have got to be focused. But the thing about this race is, there's always things in front of us. So when we get over one hurdle, one obstacle, one issue, we find a little bit of relief. And then we're happy. Only to find out that as we travel down the race there's another hurdle another obstacle again we look for relief and that comes and then we go and we focus but then again something else comes up and that's what it's like for the Christian journey in fact the Bible teaches us that our faith will be tested at times in James 1 um, 2 to 4 it says, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter 
various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. God does not want us to lack in nothing, but he wants us to grow in our faith. So these testings, these issues, these circumstances, these problems, whatever you may call them, that surround us on a daily basis, these are massive tests of our faith. But I want to encourage you today that God is in control and God will help us. And we read the, the, the passage today um, by Sister Angeline and I just want to share some thoughts through this passage that I hope that we could reflect on um, and, and, and take on board. Um, just to give you a bit of context uh, uh, about Abraham, we, we, we know that God spoke over his life and told him to come out of his comfort zone, basically his country, um, and to go to a place where God would lead him. And he said, I will make you a great nation and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. How many of you want to be a blessing? I certainly do. Well, we have to obey what God tells us to do. God reminds him by saying in chapter 13, I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. And then as we go to chapter 18, the Lord appears to both Abraham and Sarah saying, they would have a son and when he said that guess what Sarah laughed because she was old and she didn't believe that could happen so she laughed in chapter 21 Isaac was born so it's been a bit of a journey for Abraham a journey where he's trusting and walking with God but it's still he's still facing some challenges and it doesn't matter how big your faith is or how much faith you have, you're going to be tested as a Christian. You're going to be tested. You could be holier than thou. You're still going to be tested. And let these tests build your faith. Don't let these tests defeat you. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in you. The world. So I just want to pull out a few thoughts um, from the, the chapter that had been read. Why was Abraham able to stand the test of time? Why was he able to? The first point I want to bring to you is that Abraham recognised and acknowledged God's voice. He recognised and acknowledged God's voice. So when God spoke, he listened. When God spoke, he gave God his full attention. God spoke to Abraham and instructed him to take his son and sacrifice him. And it was like Abraham said, OK, I, I, I'm OK with that. Because it doesn't say in the Bible that he said no or God, what are you doing? But I want you to imagine what Sarah, his wife, would have said and others around him. They would have said, are you sure you heard this? It don't make sense. Because in the past, God said to you that he would make you the father of many nations. Why would he then tell you to go and sacrifice your son? Some things won't make sense to us. When God speaks to us, it may not necessarily make sense. But we've got to put our trust in God because he knows what he's actually doing. That word that he's spoken over Abraham's life, we know that it came into fruition. And there may be a word that God has spoken over your life. You've got to take that word and you've got to believe in that word that it will come to pass. So when he speaks that word to you, it's a word that should uplift you. It should be a word that is encouraged you. It may be a word that may even correct you. But be careful who you share this word with. Because there are a lot of doubters out there. 
and a lot of did he really say this and because of that you can begin to be easily discouraged but John 10 27 states my sheep know my voice there's a lot of voices out there a lot of people are chatting a lot of things that sound good to the air you know in this coronavirus um, circumstance that we're in there's a lot of conspiracy theories and a lot of people are saying a lot of things and Satan does this also so we ought not to be fooled but one thing we've got to do we've got to recognize God's voice and give him our full attention so all these voices all these people are saying stuff and they will in your life and sometimes these individuals are trying to encourage you and they may say the right things but we've got to listen to God because it's what he says that really counts if you're struggling with hearing God's voice clearly you need to be spending more time with him you need to be spending more time in his word yeah you need to be spending more time with him because you want to make the right decisions and you want to be guided by him that's why it's important to recognize his voice you remember the story of Samuel when he was young God was calling him but he didn't recognize the voice God called him three times and the third time Eli told him to say speak Lord for your servant is listening we need to say that to God speak Lord for I am listening I you have my full attention because I want a word from you so we've got to make sure that we are listening to God I, I just want to share a little bit of a uh, an example of this that happened in my life when I was traveling home um, from the M25 um, just trying to get home from from uh, a client's meeting um, the Lord spoke to me and said go this way and I don't normally go this direction but for some reason I decided to go um, and um, I, 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 I realized when I got home that there was a fatal accident accident further down on the road and God forbid it could have been me involved in that um, so I have to give God the praise and, I, and I've got to thank him that I listened to his voice but there has been some occasions where I've, I've, I've missed the mark I haven't listened to his voice I've made mistakes I've run ahead of him and I'm sure we all have experienced that and I've actually paid the consequences of that so my encouragement to you is listen to God's voice don't move unless you're sure that it's God's voice that is speaking secondly Abraham obeyed even though it didn't make sense as I said before it didn't make sense to sacrifice the son when God said I will make your 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 descendants great but yet he's traveling to the mountaintop to sacrifice his son it doesn't make sense walking in obedience is not based on what makes sense it's what makes sense to God that counts he inquire he requires that we follow his instructions and we've always heard this from our parents who don't hear must feel and as Christians we have to be prepared to suffer the consequences because if we're not willing to obey God then we're, we're, we're gonna suffer the consequences we are gonna feel obedience brings protection and blessings a lot of things won't make sense to us but we've got to trust and we've got to obey and Abraham did that with no issues at all he just obeyed God he heard God's voice 
and then he obeyed. He walked. Then Abraham walked in faith. In verse 5, he said to the young men that they were that were with him, wait here. I'm going to worship with Isaac and I'm going to come back. God had already spoken his word to Abraham. I will make you a father of many nations. So Abraham believed God's word and walked by faith. We also got to believe God's word and walk by faith. What is he saying to you today? What is he saying about your situation today? Walk by faith. We've got to believe God's word and walk by faith, even though we may not see a way out in the physical eye. But we must continue to believe because we do not walk by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Our God is well able only if we believe. So if you want your faith to increase, we need to get into God's word and we need to hear God's word. Because Romans, um, I believe it's Romans 10, 17 states, so faith cometh by what? By hearing and hearing the word of God. If you want to build your faith, you've got to hear the word of God. Let it come into you into your spirit and build those, those, those spiritual faith muscles so that you can reflect the person God wants you to be. Then what I liked about Abraham is that in his journey he just remained focused. Now he must have had all different types of emotions um, running through. Um, his, his body because after all he was going to sacrifice his son but he remained focused in verse 7 of, verse, of chapter 22 Isaac spoke and said to his father father yes my son Abraham replied the fire and the wood are here Isaac said but where is the lamb for the burnt offering where is the lamb? At this point, Abraham could have said, I'm not sure about this. God, I don't know what's going on there. I'm not seeing any change. I'm not seeing my breakthrough. But he continued to put God first. He continued to trust and have his confidence in God. The coronavirus has caused a lot of issues, it's caused a, a lot of struggles, um, people have, 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 have lost their jobs, people have lost their lives, people are very uncertain at the moment uh, and in these times we as believers have to really focus and, 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 and put our trust in God. So I would say don't give up now, don't be swayed or lose heart no matter what because God will see you through. I have great confidence in that for myself and for you as long as you put your trust in God he will see you through. As we all journey to the place God would have us we will be challenged and at times feel discouraged and overwhelmed. We may even slip at times but we've got to get to our destination You've got to be focused. One thing I like about uh, athletes, they are very, very focused. When they start the race, they're looking to the end and they're thinking, that's where I need to get to. And they're very focused. They're not distracted. They're staying in their lane. And that's what God wants us to, to, to be as Christians. They want, he wants us to stay in our lane and not be distracted by all types of things. He wants us to be fully focused on him. Some of the stuff we are facing today, um, as I've said before, may not make sense to us. It didn't, it, it didn't make sense to Abraham, um, but he decided that he was going to put 
his trust in God. And, you know, the whole koala and the virus thing, for me, I'm still trying to get my head around it, if I'll be truthful. I don't understand um, what's happened. How in four months um, our world could, could, could turn upside down. Um, and, and, and the government, you know, they're opening public places, they're opening the shops, the pubs, and so forth. But we can't even sing in our churches. Uh, to me, that don't make sense. That don't make sense. And I think if the government knew the power of prayer and how effective it is, they would be saying, never mind opening the pubs. <laughs> Let's get these believers back at church quickly so that they could worship and pray to their God, the God that changes things. And we know that God changes through prayer. We need to be role model behaviour in the Christian faith. Don't just talk about it, but show me. You know, sometimes we as Christians, we have a habit of, you know, talking um, uh, a lot about our faith. And which is good, because we, we should be gossiping our, the gospel. Okay? But we need to show people. People want to see God in us. They don't just want you to talk about it. Talk about it. They want to see it in us. So are you really being the salt? Are you really being the light? They want to see it because they want to see the fruit. And God is asking us to produce fruit. So don't just show me. So don't, so don't just talk about it. Show me. And in Matthew 5, 16, it's saying in the New Living Translation, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your Father in heaven. Your faith can help others grow in their faith. So we need to surround ourselves with people of faith. And I just want to challenge um, the, the young people at this time because I think in this chapter um, there's some very important points there. Can you imagine what Isaac saw and learnt from his father's faith in action? Not just talking but walking in faith. Can you imagine the influence and impact Abraham could have had on those young servants who are watching this chapter of his life? For me personally, I've seen the faith in my parents' life. I've seen the faith in the mothers of the church and the fathers of the church life. And because I've seen their faith and how God has brought them through, through difficult times, through challenges, etc., because of their faith, I honestly believe there is hope for me. When I see how the Lord has brought them through, I know that the Lord can bring me through also. So let's tap in to the experiences of our elders. They have a lot to share and a lot we can learn from them because God has brought them through and he can do the same for us. In conclusion, as Abraham went to the mountaintop, um, Abraham obeyed God and reached his destination. He prepared the altar and was just going to sacrifice his son. He didn't know how God was going to play out this episode, but he believed God would provide. Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. And he did provide. There was a, 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 a ram in 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 the thicket and the angel of the Lord said to Abraham just as he was going to put the knife in his son look God has provided the sacrifice God always comes and provides for our needs we just have to trust him we just have to 
believe in him. And there was a lady in our church that always used to say this, and many of you may know her, she's gone on to be with the Lord now, her name was Mother Dyer. And she always used to stand up and testify and say, I have, I have been young and now I'm old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. When you put your trust in God, he will come through for you. He will come through for you. So remain focused until the end. Don't give up. And for the church, God is encouraging us to be focused and not complacent. To embrace um, the new normal, so to speak, um, with the technology that is around us. You know, it's, it's a wonderful that we could use this technology to reach so many lives. Although some of us may be missing getting together, um, the, the, the hugs, the, the, the sort of encouragement that there is when we're under one roof, God is still doing the work. And you know what? We don't know what the future holds. And I want you to think about this can be the new way of doing things. We don't want to dismiss it. We want to embrace it. Because greater is he that is in us than, than he that is in the world. He could do a lot more than what we can actually think. So let's embrace this technology and let's be focused until the end. Let's continue to build each other up in our faith and let's continue to grow, helping others to grow. So my encouragement to you today as I close is recognise God's voice. When he speaks, give him your full attention. And when he speaks, obey him. Okay? Obey what he says. Walk in faith. Exercise those, those, those spiritual muscles of faith so that you can accomplish great things for him. And don't give up. Don't lose focus. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And remember, he is Jehovah Jireh. He will provide all your needs if you put your trust in him. May God bless you today. May God comfort your heart today. And may God lift you up and, and, and give you a, a, a song in your heart so that you could praise him and not feel like giving up. Remain focused. Remain focused. Remain focused. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have heard your word. We thank you, Lord, that you are encouraging us. You are speaking to us. And we're very grateful. I pray, Lord Jesus, that if there's anybody, Lord, that is feeling down, that is feeling sad, that is feeling depressed, that may be feeling lonely. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you be the God of comfort to them at this time. I want to pray for that person that may be concerned because they, 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 they may be losing their jobs. Concerned because they can't get onto that operating table. Concerned financially. Concerned about the ministry. Concerned about members. Concerned about the church, Lord, concerned about their exam results or what grades they're going to get. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would comfort them right now and be the God that provides for their needs. And I pray for that person, Lord, who may not know you as Lord and Saviour. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will, oh God, speak to them, convict them, Oh God, let them give their lives over to you so that you can transform them and make them as you would want them to be. And we shall never fail to praise you.
for you are worthy to be praised in Jesus name amen well I thank you for allowing me to share um, the world with you I hope that you've been blessed I, I, I hope that you have a, a fantastic week a blessed week walking in God's grace and favor and remember continue to be focused if there's anybody that um, would like some prayer um, the, the the email address below you, you can just contact us in that way and um, we will make sure that your prayer request gets prayed for um, in Jesus name Amen God bless you Come on let's worship together you are. You are my shepherd. Where you lead, I have no want. Where you lead, I have no want. You know what else? You're the well. You are the well. When I'm empty, then I draw my water from. That I draw my water from. You know we call him. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh. You are my provider. You are my provider. <laughs> Come on, let's call him. You're more than enough. And you are able to supply all. My needs, my needs, my needs and my desires are with the most high. For the God that I serve, that's what we said. Come listen. You are my comfort. When weeping endures the night.
Anybody believe that today? Oh, I need one person who believe that today.